We all know this, the beginning of all the things you are. Welcome to my next video. In this video, I talk a little bit about reharmonizing jazz standards. And maybe some people say, well, I already have chords to the melody, why, why change them? Well, we always try to keep things fresh and, and entertaining. And in jazz, it's, it's the usual thing. I recommend you to study reharmonization because it also trains your ear. It helps you when you compose your music. It helps you when you transcribe music. It helps you to hear chord progressions. So with all the things, all the things you are, you normally start on F minor, then it goes to B flat minor seven, then there's an E flat seven, then it's A flat major seven, and then the D flat major seven. So one trick is we play F minor, B flat minor, what did I do? Instead of the E flat 7 chord, I played D11 and second half G7 flat 13. This chord and this chord are the same notes, so don't, don't get uh, uh, mixed up with this. So, what's the theory behind this? Well, there's two explanations. First explanation, the best and the easiest. It sounds good and in general if it sounds right it is right so if you can live with this you can end this video here take this little uh, information and say goodbye but sure we can explain it um, so what's the theory behind it what could be the theory behind it because there's not one theory behind it the question is when an E flat 7 goes to the A flat major, we have a 5 1. This is the 5 chord of the A flat major. Okay? Nothing new. So when we want to substitute the E flat 7, we have to look for another chord that also wants to go to the A flat. So what is the possibility of a substitution? We could say instead of the E flat 7, we play the E diminished chord. When you watch me close, you see I'm only changing one note. Instead of the E flat, I play the E. So I'm instead of the root, I play the flat 9. So when I do this, I can move the chord up a minor third. If you don't know the trick with the diminished chord, well, maybe this already is too advanced for you, but... Um, if you want to learn it, just write down the notes. This is E, B flat, D flat, G. When I move this up a minor third, the E is here. B flat, D flat, and G. When I move it up a minor third, B flat, E, G, D flat. When I move it up a minor third, it's again the same notes. So this funny chord inverts yourself when you go up minor thirds. So this can be E, set, e flat 7, flat 9, but this also. So this can go to A flat major. And this also. 5, one, five a little tight here. But you see, this works everywhere. So we already see we can redefine the dominant chord. And there's one trick to go to the one chord via the diminished chord of the same name. So when we play A flat diminished, you see, 
this chord wants to go there. It builds up tension and it's resolving in the A-flat major chord. So the A-flat diminished chord can also be a G chord with the A-flat and the bass, like this. explanation for the G chord because the G chord functions as a kind of dominant chord to the A flat. It's not the dominant chord. It's not a triton substitute. It's not a substitute from the diminished chord. Yeah? So, but it also works because the diminished chord of the same name wants to resolve to the one chord. And the D minor chord, the D minor 11 chord, is just we put a 2 in front of this. So instead of just playing the G7, which we could, okay, and so on, I put the 2 chord in front. Because 2 5 is, is kind of the language in jazz. So we have F minor. E flat minor 7, D minor 11, G7 flat, flat 13, and the A flat major 7 chord. Okay? So, this is the re reharmonization lesson for today. One last thing, when you play all the things, one mistake I see too often is in the B section, where it goes. chord many people play A minor 7 11 but it's an A minor 7 fret 5 11 and you see the why the notes from the melody are already in this chord because it's Same with the F. Sometimes the people, well, very often the people play F minus 7, 11, but it's a flat 5 chord. If you don't believe me, believe Barry Harris, because he knows it. And this is stuff I, I learned from, from Barry Harris. So, okay, this was the last tip for all the things. Try this reharmonization. When you have a 2 5, Maybe you go and you can put this in many standards, especially when the third of the dominant chord is in the melody. Because this third of the dominant chord becomes the 11, in this case of the D minor chord. And a lot of reharmonization tricks works best when they go with the melody. So it's with reharmonization, it's not about having, having right because the theory told you you can do it. The first rule is the most important. If it sounds right, it is right. So always follow this rule first and then find an explanation in the theory books. Okay? So I hope you enjoyed this lesson and you can learn something and you enjoy practicing it. Bye-bye.